Mm -hmm. say a few words about invasive species. It's going to be very few words. And there are some pressures mm -hmm. and so on and so on on static display out in the hallway. So if you feel like it, yeah, everybody can pick some of those up. I am mainly going to tell you where you can find out any information that you want on invasive species because, of course, like all of these topics, there's a lot of it out there. Um, where I work is the Center for Invasive Species and Ecosystem Health. It's right here on the Tifton campus. The Bugwood Network or the Bugwood Group is kind of our nickname, and I don't run it. I'm just one of the people, one of the group there that works there. Um, invasive.org has information on many different types of invasive organisms. There's plants, there's animals of all kinds, including from insects, mammals, fish, the big, uh, nice, wonderful snakes we have down in the Everglades in Florida, <clears throat> all different, and pathogens as well. So, I mean, everything from mosquitoes to diseases, all kinds of things. I don't know if you're aware that the emerald ash borer has now been found in Georgia, and which is a really bad thing. And that's all of our ash trees and other associated species that those insects attack. The problems they've been having out west with so much insect damage that has killed so many trees, which is part of what has made the fires so bad out there, it absolutely can happen in Georgia. I was in North Georgia doing a talk and was talking about these insects heading our way and how scary that was to me. <clears throat> and somebody said, I heard somebody talking later, and said, oh, we won't have to worry about that. Our forests are so wet. And I'm thinking, I live in South Georgia and Okie Pinocchi's been burning for how long? <laughs> you don't get much wetter than that. So, you know, don't tell me those forests won't burn. Um, the other thing that I want to tell you about is EdMaps. And this stands for Early Detection and Distribution Mapping System. This is being used across the U.S. and Canada. This last year and a half to two years, we've been working on smartphone apps that enables people to take their phone, walk out into the field, wherever, go down the, you know, in their kayak down the river, and collect data on invasive species right with your smartphone, take a picture of it, sends the GPS coordinates, everything, straight to the computer. Straight, straight to the database, into the database. And we've created these for, I mean, we're working on, right now the project I'm working on is EdMaps West, which is the western states. So that, and we're developing for Canada too. So Georgia's, UGA in Georgia here is doing some good, good stuff with invasive species. There's all kinds of information available here. If you have your smartphone and you want to download this, this is University of Georgia, this is all free. You guys have already paid for this. This is your UGA tax dollars, whatever, for them to do this. So you go here, and if you go to our, and there's all kinds of things. Now, everything's usually available on iPhone, and most of it's also available on Android. Florida was the first group we worked with, and they helped us really get, get things uh, done well, plus we're always continuing to improve. This is ours for our area, Southeast Early Detection Network. There's also a website specifically for that. But you can go and download it for free. You can create an account in EdMaps for free. You can upload data to EdMaps for free. You always have access to your data. You can download it into different kinds of files so that you can use it in a GIS project. The data is, um, and you can use any of the data there for free any of the data in EdMaps, and it's millions of records from uh, Georgia to Alaska. So outside, uh, another part of what we do, and I'm a biologist there, that's my background is biology. And I started out, I'm from Georgia originally, but I started out working in Texas, so I've kind of worked across the area, I've worked a lot in Florida, so I've seen a lot of the different areas. And the whole world, this is another one of those things the whole world is struggling with, the whole world has a problem with. This is across the U.S., across the South, that invasive species are causing problems. They cause problems in riparian areas. They change the hydrology. They change the fire regime. They change the soil composition. They change the temperature under in the ground where they're where, that they cover, so that different, not always different organisms grow there, like frogs, for example. 
So normally there's a combination of species that's considered normal that to live in that area, but when you change the plant cover, now one species can outdo all the rest of them. So you, you're changing the habitat, you're changing the ecosystem. And this is, again, it's, it's just across the board. It's about somebody's making money at the expense of, of the public good is the way I look at it. And whether it's water, whether it's bringing new plants in that don't need to be here. And 98% and of our food supply are non-native. So the corn that we have to work really hard to grow or you know, the crops that we have to work really hard to grow, those aren't an issue. The issue are things like Chinese privet, like Japanese climbing fern, I'm going to pass these out. These, these are in every one of the South Georgia counties. I've documented this on Ed Maps. <clears throat> and when I did the canoe trip, or a kayak trip for me, down the river uh, a couple months ago, one of the things, almost the entire trip down the Flint River was this Japanese climbing fern along the banks. I mean, it was just incredible. Just made me sick seeing it. It just covered it. What? Kudzu? It was worse than kudzu. Well, when I grew up, that was the most invasive thing you saw. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And see, now there's a kudzu bug that's eating it. Oh, now, that was an accidental introduction because it also eats soybeans, so you know, it's not something we wanted. But the, another thing that I do is help to create um, publications to help people fight some of this stuff and tell you what you can do. I mean, there is something every single homeowner can do to help with the fight of invasive species. And these publications are out there. There's also all of the websites that I've talked about here are listed in these publications. So if you grab these on the way out, then you'll have that information with you so you can always get back to them. But you can Google Bugwood and get to it. Another thing Pitch always put out there is for our image database, we have over 200,000 images. And with Flickr, you might find the picture you want, but is it really the picture you're looking for? You know, is, is it really that species? You don't always know. With Bugwood, the species is identified, so you know what it is, and it's searchable. You can look for that particular plant or animal or um, technique or something in the, in the thing. It, they're free for educational purposes. So if you've got a teacher or a student who needs images for anything, they can use it. Are they restricted to invasive? No. The images? No. The images cover any kind of natural resource, agriculture, forestry, anything. Any any natural thing, science, connected. Okay. And that's it. Uh, this the apps are these apps have been developed so that the average person can go, up, go out there and collect data on invasive species and report that. Georgia DNR has worked with us to determine the species that need to be looked for. Um, other states, because this is across the southeast, have put their input, the species they want to see in here. So this is a collaborative effort across the southeast for this particular app. So the species included in there are um, submitted by different different people that they want to see what's what's out there. And there's plants, animals of different kinds, pathogens, different things that can be reported. So and that's it for me. Be sure to grab the publications out on the table in the front. Now if anybody has questions, I've got my card out there too. So if you have specific questions, if you want to learn more about how to do it or maybe do a training session, you're definitely <coughs> open for that. <coughs> available for that. Absolutely. In a general sense, sure. how do these invasive um, plants affect the water quality? The, um, the water quality itself, um, well, kudzu, for example. Okay, one of the things that kudzu was brought in for was erosion control. They have discovered that kudzu actually makes erosion worse because kudzu has one huge long tap root instead of a fibrous root system. Fibrous root systems help hold the bank there. They help hold the soil together. A taproot doesn't do that. 
And so it sends down this long tap roof and it sends up, you know, this vine and it grows over. So it looks like it's covering the land, but it really isn't. It's an umbrella over the land. So it rains, the water comes through, and it just washes the soil away. So now you're putting all that extra soil and whatever's under it in, into the water, which shouldn't be happening. Um, and things like privet can do the same type of, when, a priv, when privet grows, it will form a monoculture. So the only thing growing in the area over a period of time will become privet. And that means that none of the native species that are supposed to be there are growing there. Our native insects need the native plants. They don't recognize something like privet as food. It would be like telling them they need to eat that chair. It, they don't recognize it as food. So that's a desert. It forms a desert as far as the animals are concerned in the area. But they change, um, like the Japanese climbing fern, the one I handed out, that can change the fire regime in an area. So what um, that will grow up to the top of the tree, it will burn green. So if it's growing up into your pine plantation, then you are losing trees or getting damage to your trees that you wouldn't normally get. So it's, it just it changes the whole ecosystem when you have invasive species there. And things like they were talking about the mussels. One of the wonderful things in Georgia, and in South Georgia in particular, are how many species we have that are special just to South Georgia. These invasive species coming in eat those things or they outcompete them. And so that those special species we have are going extinct because of competition from non-native mussels or non-native fish and other animals. Yes, yes. There's many, there's uh, many non-native species that grow in the water. Yes, and they typically, anything in the water can um, multiply very rapidly. And especially if you get, you know, a nice fertilizer input from a field nearby. And they can actually cover the entire surface of a lake very quickly. And there's, it makes it impossible to fish, swim, boat, any, any kind of activity. Plus, it takes all the oxygen out of the water, kills any organisms that are trying to breathe down there. And, I mean, they're, they're just every aspect of the ecosystem is affected. Anybody else? Thank you. Thank you. I did actually want to say something.